Today, I get the chance to look back on one of the most interesting careers and people to ever step foot in WWF slash E, China. While many people think about the later years of her life, the fact is, China was a massive part of the Attitude Era and a massive star in her own right, and someone that I feel is more than worthy of her own spot in the WWE Hall of Fame. If you love wrestling as much as I do, then please subscribe for more wrestling content and if you are enjoying what I am doing, please hit that like button as it really does help. Before she was China, she was Joni Laura. And her life before the ring is quite interesting in itself. She left home at an early age, would move to Spain, graduate college, and would compete as a bodybuilder. And she also served in the Peace Corps. I remember being shocked when I read her WWF published autobiography about the hardship she went through as a child, from domestic violence, eating disorders, being sexually assaulted, and just a generally very dysfunctional upbringing. I would love to hear in the comments if any of you guys read the book and were shocked at how traumatic some of the events in her early life were. She would train at WWE Hall of Famer's Killer Kalowski's wrestling school, the same person that would train Triple H, a person who would be instrumental in her entering and exiting the WWF. China would meet Triple H and Shawn Michaels after a wrestling show in 1996, and both guys being impressed with her, put in a word, and she was brought in as a bodyguard character for Triple H. It has been said that Vince McMahon was not keen on the idea of a woman beating up men, and during his hesitation, she held discussions with WCW about performing there. I for one cannot even fathom what she would have done in WCW, but I would love to hear what you guys think they would have done with her had she gone there. In her book, she states that she would be in the NWO, but I just cannot see that. China would make her debut in early 1997 as the bodyguard for Triple H, and she was poised as a badass right from the start. One of the most memorable things during her early run happened as a result of Triple H's program with Goldust. The way she manhandled Marlena was just insane, and something we had never seen on WWF programming before. It cannot be overstated how much of a huge part of the initial run of DX China was. She along with Triple H and Shawn Michaels would run roughshod through the WWF during late 97 and early 98, and it was awesome to see. It had been said that some of the male wrestlers were not keen on selling for China, as they felt it made them look weak. One wrestler was cool with it, it was Mick Foley. China put a beating on poor old Mick Foley, and it made her seem even more of a legitimate badass. It is funny to think about how China would manhandle the guys back then. Do you think that there is any chance whatsoever that the WWF would let that happen in 2020? Throughout 1998, China would be a massive part of the new DX that featured Triple H as a leader, along with X-Pac, Road Dogg, and Billy Gunn. 1999, however, was the year when China would find herself being one of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era. It all started with the Royal Rumble, where she was the first ever female entrant. She may not have been in the Rumble long, but she still managed to eliminate Mark Henry. As cool as it was her being in the Rumble, I always wished they had her enter earlier, so she could have fought with even more of the guys. Later in 1999, China would do another first, as she became the first female to compete in the King of the Ring tournament. This King of the Ring was really cool, in that all the members of DX, except for Triple H, would compete in the tournament. Road Dogg would eliminate China from the tournament, and Billy Gunn would go on to win it all. While clearly at this time, the WWF had huge plans for Billy Gunn, a bit what if has to be what if China had won the King of the Ring. China would do another first in 1999, as she would become the first and only female to win the WWF Intercontinental title. She would defeat Jeff Jarrett in a good keeping match at No Mercy in 1999. This was a really fun match, and it is well known for being the match where Jeff Jarrett held up Vince McMahon before it happened. Reading about this in her book is truly fascinating stuff, and I recommend that you check it out if you have not. China would see her mainstream star rise even higher in 2000. Which I find interesting, as her run in the WWF in 2000 was not as epic as it had been the year before. She would enter a relationship with Eddie Guerrera, which turned out to be a ton of fun. This really let Eddie showcase his personality. It was in 2000 that China would also pose for Playboy. This was a massive deal at the time, and the magazine was a huge success. From appearances at the MTV Awards and various TV shows, China was all over the place in 2000. It is interesting that as her mainstream star raised, I felt her position in the WWF was falling a tad. 
I would be interested to know if anyone else felt the same way in the comments section down below. 2001 would be the last year for China in the WWF, and there have been all kinds of stories about her leaving the company. Before that though, she would get a WrestleMania moment at WrestleMania 17, where she would defeat Ivory for the Women's Championship. I always felt that after she won the Intercontinental Championship, that this was a huge step down for her. However, on the flip side of this, I guess you could argue that her becoming the Women's Champion did raise the profile of that title. China would officially leave the WWF in November of 2001. It has been said by Jim Ross that she wanted 1 million per year to resign with the WWF. This huge number, along with a fallout from her separation with Triple H, and him entering a relationship with Stephanie McMahon, also probably made it much easier for the WWF to let her go. China was still a massive star in 2001, so it seemed inevitable that she would do well for herself, be it still wrestling or in some other spot such as acting. In 2002, China would go to Japan, where she would compete with some greats such as Masharo Chona and Kenzo Suzuki. Many years later in 2011, she would compete in the USA again, but this time for TNA. Look, I do not want to dwell on this too much, but we all know this, in 2004, China would have her first adult movie release. Through a period of many years, China would appear in many adult Triple X movies, and this was a major reason why the WWE would not put her in the Hall of Fame. It has been said that her adult film career was started by accident, as her first adult movie was released without her permission. China had been off the rails for many years, but it has been said that in 2005, things started getting really bad. From her drug problems to her mental health problems, China's life was completely out of control. Her horribly dysfunctional relationship with X-Pac was well documented at the time. It would all come to a head on April 20th, 2016, when she would pass away at the young age of 46. It was said that she passed away from an accidental overdose from her medication and alcohol. One of the most sickening aspects of her death was the way that the WWE did not send anyone to her memorial service. WWE would not acknowledge her and used her adult film career as a reason for doing so. In an interview, Triple H said that her adult film career may be what stops her from getting in the Hall of Fame. In my opinion, this is rather disgusting as the WWF made a lot of money and a lot of mainstream PR from her appearance in Playboy. The WWE would eventually give China a place in the Hall of Fame in 2019, when she went in with D-Generation X. This was a nice touch, but I personally feel that she was such a trendsetter and such a major part of the Attitude Era that she deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame all by herself. If you agree or disagree with this, I would love to hear your reasons in the comments below. China is a true icon and one of the most interesting performers to ever step foot in the WWF. It is a shame that her last 10 years or so were out of control. To keep things positive, I would love to read your good memories of China in the comments section below.